previously on Inquiring Minds. I just got this tool in the mail. This is a tool for removing the nib and the ink collector from the Moonman TI-200. But I was also hoping this might work on the Moonman TI-500. And I was hoping that those two little nubs there would fit into that. And unfortunately, they don't. So I think we're hooped until a new tool comes around for disassembling the TI-500. And welcome back to Inquiring Minds. My name is Doug and this is part two of the disassembly video on the Moonman TI-200 and TI-500 pens. As you just saw, I was unsuccessful at getting the TI-200 disassembly tool to work on the TI-500. But I'm the kind of guy who doesn't like to give up on something once I've started it. In the last episode, I had the section off and that little brass nut inside the section was just daring me to try something anything to get it loose because the those little nubs right there don't fit that brass nut frustratingly so i just knew that if i could get that brass nut off that nib and feed collar would just slide out of there and i bought this parker jotter specifically to see if the nib was the same they look similar, but I couldn't see enough of the TI-500 nib to make a judgment as to whether they were the same or not until I got this one out. I was successful at getting the TI-500 nib out, and the news here is that the Moonman TI-500 titanium fountain pen and the Parker Jotter pen have the exact same nib, feed, and collar assemblies. They are identical parts. Not clone parts, not copied parts, but identical parts. The only conclusion we can reach here is that both pens are made in the same factory with the same tooling and parts. Moonman, Majon, Asveen is, in my opinion, the same company, and they are owned by Hero. Those of you who are pen historians will recall that Parker gave over the tooling, designs, and permission to copy the Parker 45 to the Hero Pen Company of China in 1979, so it's way too late to cry foul now, plus the fact that the Parker Jotter is made in China, probably at the Hero Factory, aka Moon Man Factory. There I said it. So I'm going to show you the result here because this took me quite a while and left the pen with a few scars, not to mention my fingers. I donated some blood samples on this one. This is all kind of loose right now, but I'll describe how I successfully removed the nib from the TI-500 and successfully did a nib swap with the Parker Jotter. So let's take this TI-500 apart and uh, show you how I did it. First, I took out the silicone O-ring and I just teased that out of there. There we go. Then I used my needle nose tweezers to get into those slots on the brass nut and I had to use a lot of force to unscrew it. And those tines of the needle nose tweezers fit right into those brass slots. And I was able to give it some torque and turn that brass nut. And it took quite a few turns to get it to unscrew. It's loose now and then that brass nut came off there it is there and you can see the, the slots on the side of it and with the nut gone I assumed that the nib would just slide right out well it didn't and I tried pulling it I tried pushing it and it really didn't work at all and so what I ended up doing was putting the pin from the TI-200 disassembly tool against the end of that feed and collar and pointed the section straight down and gave it a big push. Now it's loose now, but it took a lot of force to get it loose. And then when I got it out, I could see why. There are the remnants of the glue that was used to glue this collar into the section. And there were remnants of glue inside that titanium section as well. And the nib and the feed are friction fit inside that collar. And there's very little to grasp onto here to try to pull that. So I just went ahead and took my tweezers and clamped down on the tip of the nib right there like that. 
and pulled. Now this took a lot of force as well and it's going to leave a little divot in my nib. So I don't recommend you do this at home because it does damage your pen. Uh, but then I was able to pull it out. But it took so much force that when I pulled it out, the end of the feed shot back and hit me right in the thumb. So the many ways that Doug takes one for the Inquiring Minds team. Pull that out. Once the nib was out, the feed sort of comes out fairly easily. There we go. So there's that collar with all of its glue. And there is the feed right there. And here is the nib. So I went back to the jotter at this point, pull out the jotter, and did the same thing. I took the nail clippers and pulled on the nib. Again, it was a little bit difficult. Not as difficult as the Moon Man, but it was a little bit more difficult to get off than just that. And there's the nib, and there's the feed. And what can you tell me, folks, when you look at this part? Let's get them close so you can see them. They have the same marks on them, top and bottom. Look at those pin marks, even. They're slightly different, so they might be on different, slightly different molds, but they're identical. And you can see Moon Man's marked an F, and the Parker is marked as an M, even though the nibs are not marked. So let's look at the two nibs together, and we can see that those nibs are pretty much identical. The stamping on them, of course, is different, and the end hole there is different. But the brackets are exactly the same, and both nibs fit on both feeds, and both feeds fit in both collars, and they're completely interchangeable. So, and one of the reasons I got the jotter was because the Moonman TI-500 was a bit fine for me. And with the jotter, I have a medium nib. This is the feed from the jotter, the Parker feed. And I'm going to take the Parker nib. And of course, this collar is from the Moonman. And I'm going to take this nib, line it up, and put it into the... There, put it all the way into the Moon Man, so it's lined up and it's deep. And we're going to put the Moon Man back together again with the Parker nib. So it's a lot easier now that the glue is gone. And I'm going to push that nib in there, and it has Parker on there. And I'm going to put the brass nut back in, and that is going to be with the slots up, like that. And I'm going to get some of those threads started. I'm going to put my tweezers into those slots. And I'm going to continue to turn until I get it as tight as I can get it. And when you get down towards the end, the nib wants to rotate rather than thread that brass nut onto it. They have to hold on to the nib. There. I can't tighten it anymore. Now we have to tease that O-ring back on, like putting a tire back on a rim. There. Now we can put the section back on. But just to make sure, I'm going to put a little silicone grease on those threads on the section. Just a little dab will do you, because I don't want this leaking, and I don't want to have to go into it again. There. Now that's as tight as it will go. And there's my Parker Medium nib in my Moonman TI-500. Now let's ink it up and see if it works. And here we go with the TI-500. And it is a Moon Man Magon. Whatever you want to call it, it now has a Parker Jotter Medium Nib. And the ink is Waterman's Serenity Blue. Well, yeah, that's nicely wet now. Well, this is very nice now. Very smooth. Very wet. And much more of a medium line. Let's just get a quick measurement on this with my Richard Binder chart. Yeah, it's what I expected. It's, it's a, a 0 0.5 millimeter, maybe a touch bigger, which is a Western Fine. 
or a Japanese uh, fine to medium. There we go. A successful nib swap on my Moonman TI 500 titanium fountain pen with a Parker. Yeah, it's uh, not without its perils, folks. That was not easy. Uh, I took a few blows, and the pen took a few blows, as you can see there, too. And the nib has a few marks on it as well. But very successful all the way around. I would not suggest that if you are faint of heart that you try this at home. But it is another successful Acquiring Minds inquiry. Thanks for watching. I made this.